Hello and welcome to BlenderTutor.com. My name is Tom Latvies and this is the eighth tutorial in the Blender Bootcamp series. In this tutorial we're going to go over compositing in Blender. So let's get started. Okay, so this is our final composited image at the end of our tutorial series. Um, I'm going to go over breaking your image into layers and then recombining them in Blender with compositing. I'm also going to go over adding effects right now. You might not be able to tell, but I do have a lens distortion effect, which makes it, uh, you can kind of see it, how the, the wall back here, it's not a straight line anymore. It's a little bended. Um, that is from the lens distortion. I also have some, uh, you can see the edges are darker. I have a vignette around it. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do all of those things and I'm going to just talk about compositing in general. So let's get into Blender. Right here I have our scene that we left off on in our rendering tutorial right before this. Before I get into actual compositing, I'd like to just define what compositing is. So in general, composite means made up of distinct parts. Right down here you can see combining Yeah, combining typical essential characteristics. Basically, compositing means combining multiple parts into one group or in our in our case, uh, one image. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be combining multiple things into one image to finish our uh, render. So in the last tutorial I was talking about how we could break our image into different layers I'm gonna go back to that setup so I'm gonna move our plate back to layer 2 I already have our layer 2 created um, with our mask and everything so with that setup I'm gonna keep our export settings I'm actually yeah, I'm gonna keep it at 50 percent samples 500 and I'm going to render this really quick and then we'll get into compositing. Um, you will want to make sure to have both of your layers selected before you hit render, which I forgot to do. So just make sure you have the plate layer selected as well. I'm going to re-render this really quick. Okay. So our our uh, image is rendered. I'm going to go into the compositing viewport now. So if you go up here in Blender, do this little drop down, you can move over to compositing. And I'm going to change this to the, well, we'll have to do something real quick. So we're going to have to turn on use nodes and we're going to turn on backdrop. And um, right now you can see nothing's showing up, but we do have two nodes right here. We have our render layer, which is our scene, it's main. And then we have a composite node. Nothing's showing up right now because we actually need one more node. We need a viewer node. So if you hit Shift A, go to Output Nodes, and choose Viewer. I'm going to move that over here. Uh, in Blender, nodes read from left to right. So I'm going to take that image output of our uh, render layer and put it into the viewer node. And now that's going to show up in the background. I could actually down here also now select a viewer node. This is going to be our overall viewport as we work because uh, right now our, view, our nodes will be in the way. So right now you can see I just have layer one. Uh, it is everything but that plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create another input node. I'm going to select render layers. And now in this drop down I could select our other layer which will be plate. And now if we uh, look at that you can see this is just the plate and when I was talking about that mask what it did was it cut out the mug shape in the plate. So now what we could do is literally just put this plate image right over this image and it'll fit perfectly. So what we're going to want is to create a mix node. So if you go to color options, grab mix. And we're going to have this node first. It's going to be our uh, first image grab this one put it in the bottom image slot and we're going to need this layers alpha channel to cut it out so we're going to grab that put it in the factor 
um, slot or node and we're going to change from mix to add and now if we were to put this in our viewer node you can see we have a plate now so we are moving in the right direction and uh, for our purposes we don't really need to we didn't need to do this this was just an example I just wanted to show you that for one you could cut apart images and add them later very easily like this but also now we could affect the plate without affecting the rest of the image. There's not much we would want to do with just this plate, but I could add in a, with a color node, I could, I could go to curves and if I put an image right there and move that to replace it. Now I could, uh, you know, just affect this one plate I don't think I'd really want to too much, but I could, uh, for some reason, if I want to make this plate brighter or a different color, I could do that to adjust the, the tint of it. Um, I could do that if I wanted, which I don't want to do, but um, that's just an example. I just wanted to show you that that is very simple to do. So I'm gonna replace that back with the original. I'm gonna get rid of this to delete a node. You can just do it the same way as deleting an object. Just hit X and it'll just disappear. Okay, so we'll move this back over here. You're going to want to keep your node tree pretty uh, clean so it's easy to read and you can understand easily what each node is doing. Um, right now I'm going to go over adding a lens distortion. So if we want to do that, we're going to go down to the distort um, distort options and we will grab lens distortion and we'll take our combined image put it in there put that into viewer and um, with distort you can see it's very easy uh, it's very powerful and you're gonna wanna keep this a subtle effect if I put this up to one which is the max value it's going to be max distortion. It's going to create an oval. It's basically extremely wide angle lens. And for this, we'd never want to do something like that. Well, I wouldn't. You might have a, a reason to do that. Maybe it's like a fisheye lens on a, a robot or something. But for this, we're going to want to keep it very subtle. Even at point 0.1, you could see it's pretty rounded. I might do this 0 0.05. Just keep it really subtle. And now if I hit fit, It'll actually zoom it in so that you have no black edges. So, um, you know, if you go back and forth, you can see it's a nice subtle effect, uh, which is realistic to how um, camera lenses actually act in the real world. Although, like, like I said, you're going to want to keep this very subtle, maybe even like 0 0.03, because... If you go too overboard, it's going to be too obvious, and it's going to take away from the image. Um, along with that, you can also do dispersion, which is going to basically, it's going to do a little more lens distortion like that, but it's also going to do some color uh, warping on the edges of your image. So the farther out from the center, the more warped the colors will be. Uh, I'll show you an example of this. If I go up to point 0.1, you can see how it's now very... kind of it's breaking it into different color spectrums um, if I go back to zero you can see that's for one it's stretching it out but it's also now right now it's nice and just a white line if I go to point one now it breaks it up into all these different colors it's blurring it uh, it does a lot to it and you know that is a, a realistic effect if you keep it subtle enough once again this this would be uh, far too powerful for this image uh, for this, I might keep that down to 0.02, and you could already see just even 0.02 is starting to warp the colors a little. So I'm going to keep it at that, and now I'm going to go over adding that vignette. So what we're going to do is add another lens distortion. Another way we could do this is just by selecting a lens distortion node. I can hit Shift D to duplicate it. I'm going to uh, reset this back to zero on everything. 
I'm going to also need a math node in the converter category. Go to math. And we're going to change this to less than. And then the last node we'll need is a blur node. So we'll go to filter. Uh, we will select, where is it? We'll, we'll select blur and then in here we'll select Gaussian. Um, and I did not want that actually. What we will do is uh, do this. So we'll take this uh, lens distortion output, put it in the image, select that, turn that, I believe I have this up to one. And then I'll put this in the image slot and we'll put this over here. I'm gonna have distort up to one. I might actually have this down to zero. Let's swap these out. Put that up to one. There we go. So we're gonna have this at zero, have this in the bottom value input, and now I'm gonna have this white circle with the black border around it. And now we'll use our blur node to soften this edge. Um, so I will I'll choose relative, and I'm gonna do 15 and 15, which is what I did in my image. You can make that even softer if this is too harsh for you. I might go up to like 18, 18, okay. So this now we're gonna, once again, be creating, or we're gonna combine two different images together. So we're gonna take this add node, hit shift D, move this over here. We'll take our output from our lens distortion, which is our actual image, put this in the top node. And we'll take this, uh, output from the blur node, which is our uh, vignette, put that into the bottom node. And now what we're gonna do is change it from add to multiply. And we'll bring this down here into our viewer and also up here in our composite. And basically this fact value right here is how powerful that uh, is going to be. So if I turn this all the way to zero, it's gonna not be adding it at all, but as I go up, you can see it becoming stronger and stronger. With this, maybe a 0.8 would be uh, powerful enough for us. If you really wanna go crazy, go 0.9. You can see it down here. And uh, that right there, I'm gonna leave it. Oh, well, you know, we'll do a little color correction too, just to give you uh, an example of that. So before I actually add in that vignette, I would, uh, We'll add the color correction node. So go to color and go to color balance. This is my personal favorite because I come from film editing and color correction. I'm used to the three uh, circle color wheels, but I know a lot of people also like to work with the curves, uh, which is another viable option. You could affect the uh, red, green, and blue channels. Uh, we'll, we'll go over that another time. So right now we'll stick with color balance. Take our image, put it in there, and we're gonna skip over the vignette real quick. We'll just go straight into our uh, viewer. And with this, this, uh, this node is actually very powerful. You could not only control contrast, but also um, basically the color values of your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights in your image. So. With this, I could lower all of my shadows darker, and then I could bring my highlights brighter, which is gonna add a lot more contrast to my image. And now, really the most powerful slider we're gonna have on here is gonna be the midtones. That's where most of your image's color values lie, is in the midtones. So, the darker I bring that, the entire image comes down, or the more I bring it up, the entire image gets brighter. So I'm gonna leave that around there. And uh, then we could even change the, the tint of stuff. So I might want the overall highlights to be a little cooler so I could bring that into the blue category. And then, but I want the image overall to be a little warmer so I could bring that more towards yellow, red. Generally, I won't affect the, the shadows because that becomes too maybe stylized. It looks like old uh, film a lot of time if you make that like reddish or something. And even in this image overall, this image is very, uh, it's got a lot of shadows in it or darker colors already. So this 
this is actually affecting it a lot as well. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring that back up to uh, about neutral. But you know, so that is an option to work with, but that's generally more stylized. I would stick with midtones and highlights. And now what we'll do is we'll just bring that color balance image and replace this one right here. And then we're now we're just basically adding the vignette over that color corrected image now. And uh, that is about it in compositing uh, for for our basics. Obviously, there's a lot more to learn, but this is a good starting point. I would definitely get you know used to the compositor as quickly as possible. It's very powerful and very useful. Obviously, I could have done all of this in Photoshop or GIMP, but it's nice to be able to play with it in Blender, and you could do all of your work in Blender if you wanted to. Um, obviously, you're going to do whatever is easiest for you, but it's it's worth checking out. So, um, let's see. Cool. So, once again, one, once we've rendered all this and we're happy with our final viewer node image, we could save that as an image. So, I'll go out to my rendering. We're going to go up to compositing, put it in the renders folder. I'll call this 03. And now if I want to open that up, there's our finished uh, composited image. So thank you for watching. And our last tutorial in the Blender Bootcamp series is going to be animation uh, basics. So see you then. Thanks.